Okay, this is chapter 19, Safe for Democracy, the United States in World War I. And this chapter is going to cover not only World War I, but also the uh, time of intervention in Latin America and the Caribbean in the years preceding it. Um, we can see here on this map uh, of colonial possessions at the turn of the century, you can see the division of Africa and Asia carved up by the European powers. Uh, we see evidence of the United States' imperialism with Hawaii and the Philippines and uh, Puerto Rico. Um, and very soon after, uh, the, these, this battle over these colonial possessions that will be one of the reasons for the outbreak of the First World War. So these progressive presidents we've talked about, Roosevelt, Taft, Wilson, uh, they're going to send Marines to the Caribbean more than 20 times uh, in less than a 20-year period. Uh, President Roosevelt boasts, I took the canal zone, and he's going to um, bully Colombia into giving Panama their independence so that the United States could complete the Panama Canal. But it was a tremendous achievement in uh, engineering and also um, incredibly huge for the American shipping and also for the Navy. Um, so now the time to, to cross uh, from the Atlantic to the Pacific is significantly reduced. Uh, Roosevelt bragged about speaking softly and carrying a big stick. Okay, so um, America was not afraid to exert force if necessary um, in order to get what they wanted um, in these areas. So lots of intervention in countries like uh, Cuba and the Dominican Republic and Haiti and um, various countries throughout Central America. Uh, here's an image of the uh, Pan Panama Canal Zone, um, the Caribbean Sea on the top. Gulf of Panama on the bottom. Uh, Roosevelt's going to make an addition to the Monroe Doctrine, the Roosevelt Corollary, which uh, ex the United States exercised the right to be an international police power throughout the Western Hemisphere. Um, so Roosevelt feared that these countries' financial instability would invite Europeans to intervene, and the United States wanted to enforce the Monroe Doctrine to keep that from happening. So in 1904, when uh, the Dominican Republic was having trouble um, paying their debts to Europeans and the Americans. Uh, troops were sent in to, to ensure that it would happen. Uh, same thing with Cuba. Troops were sent there, but this was to oversee a dispute of election. Uh, Taft, when he took over after Roosevelt, um, instituted a policy known as dollar diplomacy, um, which emphasized uh, economic investment and bank loans to these countries rather than military invention. Uh, Woodrow Wilson is going to send more soldiers to the Caribbean than any president before or since. Um, he promises to respect Latin American independence, um, not so much. Uh, he believed the United States had a duty to uh, teach these nations about democracy and spread uh, American ideals. Uh, Wilson will be heavily involved with Mexico, and he's vowed to teach the Mexicans to elect good men. So when a civil war broke out there, troops were sent to prevent a shipment of weapons. Uh, later, 10,000 American troops were dispatched uh, to capture Pancho Villa after he raided a New Mexico town. Um, this is shortly before World War I. So June 1914, June 28th, uh, Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated. And this is going to trigger a chain reaction that's going to start World War I. Um, Austria, a month later, will declare war on Serbia. Uh, the alliances will tie everybody in. Uh, Russia tied Serbia, Britain and France and Russia all together. Uh, Germany had Austria-Hungary's back. The Ottoman Empire is going to enter in after. Horrific modern war, a bloody stalemate for four years. In the Western Front, a uh, war of attrition, millions of soldiers dying, millions of civilians getting killed, um, all kinds of new weapons. Uh, Put to use the poison gas and the tanks and airplanes, submarine attacks, the machine gun, um, and America stayed out of the war initially. Americans were divided, many German Americans, many English lived here, Irish um, opposed the British, uh, you can go on and on. And America will remain neutral until 1917. Uh, early in the war, American ships were attacked. Um, by the Germans when they would, were trying to send supplies to the British. Uh, the famous Lusitania uh, was sunk in 1915 and, and uh, Wilson warned the Germans no more submarine attacks or else. And the Germans are going to lay off for a while 
until a new strategy that was instituted. Uh, their goal was to starve the British, knock any ship out uh, on its way to, to England with supplies, and the goal was if they could make England surrender before America entered the war, they had a chance to win and break up the stalemate. Um, so Germany will resume unrestric unrestricted submarine attacks uh, in 1917, and the British are going to intercept a note uh, known as the Zimmerman note, where Germany asked Mexico to attack the United States, keep them busy, keep them out of Europe, and Germany would help them reclaim the land lost in the Mexican War back in 1846 to 48. Uh, meanwhile, Russia, um, doing horribly well against horribly against the uh, Germans in World War One, they're going to have a revolution, a civil war ensues, and Russia is going to leave the war. So now Wilson can go with the idea, well. We can join the Allied Powers because everybody that's in them now is democratic. Uh, Wilson later releases his 14 points, which states his war aims, his vision of a new international order where countries can determine their own, their own um, self-determination, uh, freedom of the seas, free trade. Uh, he wants to set up a world peacekeeping organization. Uh, there's the passenger liner, the Lusitania, which we do know now was carrying armaments to to England, and the Germans warn these ships, if you're carrying weapons, you will be sunk. Uh, here's an image of the Western Front, where the Germans and the, we're going to battle against the French and the, and the British and Australians and New Zealanders and African soldiers were involved, because this is a time of imperialism, fighting on the side of the French, the Belgians, of course, um, so it just was a horrific, horrific war. And the war at home had a tremendous impact on, on Americans and on liberty. Um, the government's power is going to grow uh, to unprecedented heights at this time. Uh, the Selective Service Act is going to force 24 million men to register for the draft. Uh, Five million will enter the Army. Uh, the War Industries Board, the Railroad Administration, Fuel Agency, um, all of these administrations are created with the, with the goal of, of winning this war, with total war. Uh, benefits for the American people, higher wages, you know, more hours, um, things like that. Uh, it's a war of propaganda as well. A committee on public information was created to build support for this war. You know, the Statue of Liberty was the most common theme, uh, making the Germans out to be barbarians and murderers, um, helped sway public opinion against Germany towards England. Um, Here's an example, the uh, Statue of Liberty by a Liberty Bond, government's way of generating money to pay for the war now. Uh, here, of course, we have the red, white, and blue of the American flag, you know, ringing the bell for liberty. Um, and of course, destroy this mad brute, which represents Germany. Women's suffrage is right around the corner, finally. Um, women grew militant in the 19 teens. Uh, they would go on hunger strikes. They would uh, get arrested, breaking laws that they felt were unjust, uh, demonstrations throughout the country in front of the White House. Finally, 19th Amendment was ratified in 1920. Uh, there was a growing uh, support to ban alcohol in the, in the nation. Many countries, or many states had already done so before uh, prohibition was, was enacted with the 18th Amendment. Uh, a lot of German brewers were uh, here in America, so uh, beer became unpopular. And also the desire to uh, use the wheat for the soldiers overseas rather than uh, turn it into beer. So this growing support of prohibition will result in the uh, banning of alcohol shortly after the war. Uh, here's some images of women showing their toughness in the, in the above picture, hauling ice and uh, the protesting on the bottom. And you can see here in this, in this picture uh, all of the states that already became dry and banned alcohol. Uh, and this is 1915, a lot of the southern states and the western states. And uh, by 1920, the whole country will be dry. Liberty in wartime will suffer. We talked a little bit about that in the Civil War with Lincoln, um, but it's going to be extreme uh, this time around, ironically, under the progressives. Um, the Espionage Act prohibited anybody from spying, from interfering with the draft, uh, making false statements that might uh, hurt military success. Uh, the Postmaster General banned from the mail any radical and socialist newspapers. 
Uh, and then the Sedition Act made it a crime to make uh, negative, or s negative spoken or written statements about the government. So this freedom of speech that Americans have uh, been entitled to is, is no longer applicable. Uh, 2,000 men and women were convicted, uh, including Eugene Debs, who was uh, sentenced to 10 years for giving an anti-war speech. Um, who is an American? Uh, we've talked about W.E.B. Du Bois you know, as an alternative to Booker T. Washington, uh, the revival of black protest. Uh, he believed educated blacks like himself could use their talents to fight inequality. You know, him and his friends called themselves the Talented Tenth. They launched the Niagara Movement, um, demanding the restoration of black voting rights, ending segregation. He's going to be a founding member of the NAACP, where they want the 14th and 15th Amendments um, applied to them as well. Uh, here's a picture of W.E.B. Du Bois. So all of this is happening as well um, during these World War I years. Um, African Americans will start moving north. Uh, the Great Migration, uh, getting out of the south, finding the Promised Land. Um, half a million blacks will move to the north in this time period, and another million will move after uh, 1920. Um, unfortunately, racial violence uh, did follow. Um, everywhere, north and south. Um, dozens of blacks were killed in an East St. Louis riot. Uh, more than 250 were killed throughout northern cities in 1919. Um, and then the worst one, 300 were killed by a white mob in Tulsa, Oklahoma um, over something so trivial. Uh, 1919 was a year of global social and political unrest. So this is the year after the war, which we didn't talk about the end of it yet. Uh, but Vladimir Lenin, the new leader of, of the Soviet Union, which was Russia, now they're a communist country, they want workers around the world to revolt. And they're going to inspire parts of Germany and Hungary. Um, strikes will demand um, industrial democracy um, in Belfast and Glasgow and Winnipeg. Uh, America had four million workers on strike in that year. The Americans and the Allies uh, will send troops to fight Lenin in the Russian Civil War. Uh, um, and the Soviet Union was not invited to the Versailles Peace Talk. Um, this is going to be the beginning of a long period of anti-communism, uh, which will dominate the 1900s all the way up until 1991. Um, so the Great Steel Strike, 350,000 uh, mostly immigrant workers, um, and employers are going to resort to nativism and they're going to try to tie the strike to communism and disloyalty um, and all of this will fuel this red scare this, this hatred of of communists um, attorney general a mitchell palmer is going to order raids on radical and labor organizations j Edgar hoover future leader of the fbi um, they're going to arrest five thousand people most of them without search warrants violation of the fourth amendment and they're going to deport hundreds of these men uh, and the Red Scare will destroy the radical groups like the Socialist Party and the industrial workers of the world. Here the local police are seizing literature from a Communist Party office in Massachusetts. So to wrap up the war, uh, President Wilson will go to Versailles to negotiate uh, the peace treaty. Um, They're going to heavily, heavily punish Germany, mostly at the hands of, of England and France. Um, so Wilson's 14 points, only a few of them will actually come to fruition. Um, you know, the idea of that national self-determination for Eastern Europe, that will be achieved uh, for the most part. But it's a vengeful treaty that really will guarantee another world war um, 20 years later. Um, and this Wilsonian movement, or moment, where uh, countries around the world, minority groups around the world, um, forced under colonialism, will be fighting for self-determination um, that did spread from, from this Wilsonian ideal. Here's the crowd greeting Wilson because the Americans were heroes to the Europeans once they entered uh, the war in 1917. I uh, was turning tide to defeat the Germans. Um, so Woodrow Wilson saw the League of Nations um, as the war's most important legacy. So today we have the United Nations, um, the World Peacekeeping Organization, uh, this was a precursor to it, and uh, many Americans feared that if they were members of a League of Nations, then they would be forced into commitments in the affairs of other nations. America is going to retreat at this time back to isolationism, not getting involved in the affairs of the Europeans.